So hey nerds, this is Suman and in this video, I'm gonna prove you the electron do follow Planck's radiation law. Uh, from my last previous videos, I have been uh, assuming that the electron energy is negative, it is quantized and it obeys Planck's radiation law. I know the electron do not travel at the speed of light, but it travels at the velocity, certain velocity, right? So there will kind of be the, some connection between the electron and the photon energy relation that's what i am predicting that i am predicting electron energy electron also follows planck's radiation law and if you actually prove it you can actually picture the atom in such a way in like the colors just imagine if electron obeys planck's energy radiation law you can actually picture the atom around the colors isn't that interesting so so in order to do uh, such proof, I need something couple of things. Like I have to follow Bohr's assumption. Second, I use Bohr's relation. And thirdly, I present my opinion. So I hope you guys little understand basics of physics and you had some knowledge about Bohr's idea. The Bohr's energy uh, the Bohr energy equation and you need the Bohr's velocity equation for an hydrogen atom because I'm using hydrogen atom because the Bohr's theory successfully explained the hydrogen and hydrogen like spectrum sorry hydrogen and hydrogen like atom so that's why I'm using that concept so I would show you the wavelength of electron and I would actually uh, use same wavelength relation just to prove my idea was actually true and it is the direct consequence of uh, Planck's energy radiation law. So let us dive into the whiteboard. So in order to evaluate the wavelength of electron with a certain definite energy that is quantized energy, I am using Bohr's idea. The energy of nth orbit relation is this and the uh, velocity of corresponding nth orbit is this. Right, and this is my assumption that the electron follow Planck's radiation. We all know that E equals HF, and it is nothing but HC upon lambda. The C is the speed of light. This is true for photon, but I am also assuming that this equation holds true for electron with velocity VE and wavelength lambda E. So now, this is the result what I am getting in future, and this is one relation you might have know about the wavelength shift of electron sorry the wavelength of emitted photon is given by this quantum state relation right so firstly i am calculating wavelength of electron the associated wavelength of electron within the nucleus right so i am using this energy relation and i hope you guys all know about the corresponding term the term z is number of protons right i am using the respective terms and m is mass of electron so if you know this you can already skip further ahead in the video so n is principal quantum number quantum number and it values uh, varies from 1 to 3 it is integer right so h square is h is just a Planck's constant Planck's constant and SI lot is permittivity permittivity of free space right so these are this is just the unit to make the equation correct and this Vn is velocity of electron in nth orbit and En is the energy of electron associated within nth orbit right so I hope you all know this basic idea so I am using this relation and I can write I don't we are just doing this experiment for hydrogen atom, right? So we can use Z is equal to 1. There is a one number of proton. I am not using isotopes. So I have energy of nth orbit is negative Z square M E power 4 by 8 N square H square F sin naught square, right? So my assumption is that this energy must have to be equal to this type, this energy. So negative h velocity of electron upon lambda of electron is negative z square me power 4 by 8 
n square h square h and not square right so i am using the concept i am using the same concept that total energy of electron is negative and it is quantized and it obeys planck's radiation law because the electron is not moving with the speed of light because it is moving with a certain velocity that's why i am using ve as the velocity of electron and you get you might have understand that why i am using negative here because the total energy of electron is negative and if you get the difference of this energy you will end up getting zero it is it makes sense so this will end up getting plus and hence upon lambda and velocity of electron in nth orbit is given by z d square by 2 nh epsilon not and this is z d square m e power 4 by 8 nh epsilon not whole square i'm using this because i don't want my equation looks messy rather i want to make it ronald so nh epsilon not nh epsilon not will cancel out This e square will e square cancel out, and one term of z will cancel out. Is it a so h upon lambda of electron? This is the wavelength of electron, not the wavelength of photon. Right? Equals the two will goes out. Let's say it's four. Right? So it is m z m e square by four n h f sin r. If you flip this over, you will end up getting. This quantity z m e square. So the wavelength of electron is nothing but 4 n h square f sin naught by z m e square, right? Z m e square. So are you guys find the variable in this term? So the variable can be n upon z to be is a variable because the principal quantum number can changes from uh, one state to another state. And the z can be uh, replaced from number of protons when going from hydrogen to helium to lithium to barium to boron. The number of protons will go on changing, right? So you will get some constant quantity that is 4 h square s i n naught by m e square. So by putting the substitution by using the values of this constant, you can actually find this is 6.6594 angstrom because. Principal quantum number is unitless. Z is also unitless. So this has to be the meter, and you will end up getting wavelength of electron is n upon z, six point six five nine four angstrom. Six point six five nine four angstrom. So the wavelength of electron with energy e can be represented as like this. So for hydrogen atom n is equal to one and z is equal to one and it will end up getting lambda e is equal to six point six five nine four angstrom for hydrogen atom. This is the minimum possible wavelength, right? Isn't that so beautiful? Let us say this is a Schumann wavelength because scientists use their Name in their reference in their work. So let us assume it is Schumann's wavelength. So I found that the wavelength of electron is directly proportional. The wavelength of electron is directly proportional to the size of the principal quantum number. The larger the size, the larger will be your wavelength because it's directly proportional to the n. And inversely proportional. And inversely proportional to z number of protons. Because if the number of protons goes on increasing, uh, it will push the electron cloud towards itself. The cell will shrink down on increasing the number of protons in the nucleus. Right? There will be more effective nuclear electrostatic attraction between two charges, and the orbit will actually shrink down. That's why you will get different wavelengths for different atoms. Right? So this makes sense. So I am using. Okay. Okay. So the wavelength of electron I have calculated is n upon z, 4 h square f sin naught by m e square. So one may can ask me that, okay, so you have found this, the result is this. So do you have any experimental proof or the theoretical proof that we can? Say that the total energy of electron is negative and it obeys Planck's radiation law and its energy is quantized. And I will say yes, I have some theoretical proofs. 
because I can prove this from this relation. So let us use this relation and do the same idea that is done by the Bohas. So let us do again some messy looking mathematics. Let us say we have two orbits here that having energy E1 minus HV1 upon lambda 1 and E2 is minus HV2 upon lambda 2 and we know that the difference of these two energy the difference of these two energy always gives us energy of photon so this is the interpretation that is done by Bohr's in his idea uh, to explain the hydrogen effect phenomena right so H nu of photon I am using nu for photon and F for frequency of electron it makes sense to us so it is negative H V2 upon lambda 2 minus H so it is negative right so E1 you have to use v1 lambda 1 e2 uh, v2 lambda 2 right h v2 upon lambda 2 so you can write from here v1 upon lambda 1 minus v2 upon lambda 2 sorry general mistakes right so you can make and the planck's constant will cancel out each other in any sense you can see from here so i am going to prove this let us do that. Frequency of photon is nothing. So you can use the velocity relation for V1, for N1 orbit. For V1, there will be N1 quantum state. Okay. That is Z E square by 2 N1 H epsilon. And similarly for uh, lambda 1 wavelength, you can use from this relation N1 upon Z 4 N 4 H square epsilon naught by M E square and by looking this symmetry you can write this symmetry also here that Z E square by 2 N2 H epsilon naught by N2 upon Z. So actually by looking this symmetry right for N1 quantum state there will be N1 and for N2 quantum state there will be N2 right and now we have to do some little bit of math we know that A by B and it is a big divide that is C by D will end up getting AD upon BD. So I am using that idea. The new of photon is uh, Z and Z will give you Z square M and E square times E square is E power 4 by 4 to the 8 N1 into N1 N1 square and H square into H H cube epsilon naught into epsilon naught epsilon naught square. And by the same symmetry there will be N2 and the remaining term will be same z square m e power 4 by 8 n 2 square h cube epsilon naught square you can see right so now you can take very much thing common out of this bracket that is z square m e 4 by 8 h cube epsilon naught square and this is 1 upon n 1 square minus 1 upon n 2 square so it makes actually sense here right so the frequency of photon can be represented as speed of light upon wavelength. So I can write here 1 and make sure that C will go here. Z square m e power 4 by 8 h cube c epsilon naught square 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square. And this is my answer. So, so I am doing something very much here that the result we obtained so is 1 upon lambda of photon is z square and this term can be written as Rydberg's constant the r in here Rydberg's constant r 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square right it makes sense so this is my theoretical proof to this right so this equation is actually taking the same thing so if you use this equation instead of using this you will end up getting the same result and if we quantize the energy of electron it's an, and say that energy of electron is negative and it obeys Planck's radiation law so this is the so this is the result that is gained by Bohr's and 
uh, that is using we obtain by using Bohr's energy, uh, Bohr's energy level, and this is the energy we obtain by using this quantized term. So by using this calculation assumptions, we can actually calculate the wavelength of electron, the wavelength of electron, the wavelength associated with energy, uh, the electron which has actually energy. And this is my theoretical proof. And if you have any some better ideas, you can actually comment down.